Dave here, how are you? Now I feel a little bit awkward because I don't have you guys at the moment giving me feedback because this is a pre-recorded. So it's Dave Stanton almost live and today is Sunday the 17th of November 2019. Now what a, what a week and what a crazy six weeks I've just experienced. It started off with a hernia operation it's gone through with having solar panels uh, installed on some of the buildings. Uh, it then it went to down to the Canberra timber and working with wood show or the I've got to get that right timber tools and artisans show at Canberra, which was fantastic. And then whilst I was down there, a bushfire hit. And <laughs> man, what do you do? And now I'm doing a, a recorded live show. The reason we're doing this is because the internet connection at my place has been really struggling whilst they're installing the new system out on the road. Hopefully in around two to three weeks we will be streaming in full HD. Now this is the kind of quality I'm hoping you can expect to get. This will not be pixelated, this will be live, this will be nice and clean like it is at the moment. You'll be able to see details so much better than what I've been able to bring you previously. Unless, of course, you've been watching on a tiny screen and that it hasn't really been too much of a bother. But this is exciting times. This is very exciting times. Let me have a read through here. Um, I'm going to show you the best way to make use of T-Tracks for jigs. Now, I started doing this last week, at, and, or sorry, the week before, because last week we broadcast from the show. And the problem being, because it was uploading at 0.3 of a megabit per second, which is crazy slow, the, we were dropping frames everywhere in the video and also then the whole video was cut short down to around about 20 minutes. So anyone that watched the recorded version after the fact uh, would have been extremely disappointed. I got a truckload of thumbs down and I get that, I understand that, but please don't do the thumbs down because it's not me doing it. These are things out of my control. Next thing, next thing, next thing. We have keep your brass shiny and I'm going to show you a way as well where one of the subscribers, Derek Lark, used a hand drill and I'm going to show you how to set that up. Actually, on my Stanton bench, I'm going to show you a really easy way to do it if you don't have a lathe or if you don't have a drill press. So this could work for you. I just caught myself there on the side. Got a little bit of whiskers happening on the side here as well. Yeah, change, mess it around a bit. All right, now, 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 the ex, next thing. Bushfires came too close to my workshop and I'm going to show you that now. Let's see if I can see. Uh, this, this is just a quick picture to show you how close the bushfires came up beside one of the buildings on the block. And I'll tell you what, this is behind it and you can see in the top right corner that is actually behind my workshop as well. That is how close the fires got. I'm going to a little bit later on in the show show you a, uh, some video of the helicopters coming in. Now about two kilometers from this property is a rural acreage and they have a large dam down there and that's where the helicopters were collecting the water in the buckets and there was four helicopters in a matter of two and a half minutes. That is the, they were, they, apparently there were six of them in rotation. My neighbor, Jeff Bennett, who was here, of course I wasn't here, he, uh, he got his phone out. He was videoing and taking photos and his wife, Annette, man, oh man, she's fantastic. She saved this place. She got down here with the other fireys because she used to be a volunteer uh, with the Bushfire Brigade and put all the gear on and she was hosing away. And you know, there are so many people I have to thank. I'm not just going to isolate Annette, my son-in-law, my daughters, family, neighbors. They all rallied while Vicky and I were down having a ball <laughs> on camera. But we were stressed to the eyeballs, but hopefully it didn't come through whilst we're, you know, actually at the show talking to everyone. And thank you so much to everyone who's, you know, said, you know, so glad that it worked out well for you. And we didn't lose property. I've just done a major investment on all those solar panels. And I would have cried. <laughs> okay, last thing, support the channel through Patreon and the Amazon links below if you can. It really does help. And thank you so much to everyone who has been doing that. All right, 
T-Tracks. The first thing I want to do is talk about aluminium. Now, you guys in the States will call it aluminum. This is just a piece of Veritas quarter inch T-Track. Now, the thing about Veritas's T-Tracks is the quarter inch is three quarters of an inch overall in width, three eighths of an inch deep. It comes without any holes in the bottom. I've just drilled a couple of holes in here mucking around with it. But it does have a whole lot of little slots and grooves around the outside, which makes it easy for you to glue into a dado that you may, may have created on a jig if you want to use a clamp of some sort to hold things down. Like if I was to make a, uh, a, slide, a coping jig of some sort to slide past my router table, or if I want to actually use on my stand and bench, I've got one of them recessed into the top and also one on the front here which makes it extremely versatile. I still have the holes everywhere for using hold down clamps as per um, Festool and also um, Festool's lever clamps, which are fantastic. Now, the thing is, with this track, this is a universal track. Even though I've said it's quarter inch, it will also take 5 16 T-bolts. And it will also take the mushroom head from the Craig bench clamp. So it will slide in there, but it's very, very close to the bottom. And if you don't get your screws, if you, if you are going to screw this in at all, if your screws aren't all the way down and dead flat with the surface, level with the surface at the bottom of the track, this will hit. So I'll show you a little tip that I've done for that with the Craig bench clamps as well when using with this. Now, the first thing we need to know, oh, sorry, also, if you buy their 5 16 track, don't be tricked, it's actually around 7 eighths of an inch wide. So it will not fit in a standard mitre slot for as my um, bandsaw or my table saw. They have 3 quarter inch mitre slots. So a little thing to keep your eye open for. If you don't get this type of track, if you get something like a Craig Universal track, or the, this one, I think also, um, uh, look, there's, there's a whole heap of companies make them, Increment, I think, make them. But be aware of the Craig Mini Track. Now, don't get caught with this little guy. This is a quarter inch track only. It's only a quarter inch track, and it's great for what it does, but it will not take the 5 16 T bolts. You may think that's crazy. Well, I do too. But the, Craig do make a heavy duty track pardon me, to work with their mushroom heads. See, it just won't go in. It will not fit in there. Okay, very important. If you're going to get a blue one, make sure it's a Rockler or Craig's Heavy Duty, but it's a much bigger track as well as per the Veritas 5 16 track is bigger than this. So stick with this one. This is the one I like. I draw my own holes and I'm going to show you how to do that and also to cut it. Now I'm going to go over to the CapEx if I can see how this is working, give me a sec. This is so interesting, uh, not getting the feedback. And some people might say, Dave, this could even be better because the chat could be distracting from what I'm actually talking about. I don't know. I kind of, I like the chat. I like the chat. I, well, I, both ways, I'm fine. All right, now let me switch over to the second camera, which I've got set up already over at the CapEx. Now, you can cut aluminium with a standard blade. That's all I've got in there is the standard blade. I don't do it a lot, only rarely. And, you know, I could spend a truckload of money on a blade for aluminium, but for, the, for a couple of times, it's a whole lot neater than using a hacksaw. Now I've got to make sure, Vicky was using the workshop yesterday, and I'm going to sneak around the back here and make sure I've got the right dust vents open on the extraction system and they weren't I shut that open that one and that should be good uh, someone made comment the other week when i did the show about using dust extraction with aluminium i'm only cutting it i'm not sanding it and that there's a big difference there um, and open that port that's all good and i'm hoping everything else is connected down there i've got the eye muffs and i had george uh, with the eye muffs at the show next to me down at Canberra. And that was fantastic. We chatted about rubbish all weekend. 
Okay, so glasses are on. I've got the eye muffs on. These are fantastic. I'll leave a link um, to Reptiler. Oh, so there's probably already, already a link down there. Now, I've set the saw speed down to four. There's a little, on the back of the saw, there's a, a speed control. Six being the fastest, one being the slowest. Uh, and we're just going to cut it. I haven't got a backboard here, but you'll notice when I finish the cut, I don't lift the saw until it's stopped because I don't want these things flying around the workshop. If they do take off, it's not a big issue, just as long as no one else is here. I do have the protection on my face. I'm going to put the clamp to hold it. Keeps my fingers out of the way. And this is just a demonstration. Here we go. Before, before, you know, people have said, Dave, this is fine if you do the show. Make sure it's warts and all. Well, here you go. There, that was a wart right then. I hadn't turned my dust extractor on. Hit the source button. I wait for it to wind up. It draws a heavy ampage at the beginning. Here we go. Stop and raise. See, it did take off. It's not a big issue. It shot, shot out the back. Up again. Now that's a nice clean cut. You can cut it with a hacksaw if you want to. Turn that off. Take this off and I'll go back around over here. I even waited till an o'clock, switch back to here. I waited till the clock hit the hour so I can keep an eye out there. We've already gone yeah, 12 or 13 minutes and people will be complaining, 10 minutes in and he hasn't done a bloody thing. He's enjoying himself, that's what he's doing. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure, I'll put this aside because that was only a small piece. I'm going to use these. Now I've already cut this to the right length. This is the exact length for a Stanton bench. <laughs> I sold out at the show, I can't believe it. We sold out and I've got heaps of orders. Grab one, they're fantastic, I love them. All right, now we're going to use a Sharpie have I got it ready? Yes, I've got one here. Beautiful. Glasses on again. And this is a track that I've already pre-drilled. So this I know is equal from either end in. So I'm going to have the same kind of hold down capacity if I put a clamp in it, whether it's right at the end. I'm not, I'm not in four inches. Four inches is too far. I'm in around about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half. So around 38 millimeters in from the end, I, th I think it's a pretty good spot. Now I'm going to mark, I'm gonna put this, there's the track I wanna drill out, and there's the track I'm gonna put on top as the template. So I'm gonna mark in the middle of all of those. Now this might be a bit slow for a lot of people. Um, I try, I try, I really do try to make sure that what I'm explaining, absolutely anyone can understand. If you find that this is taking too long for you, I get that. You know, I, please consider the other people that are only just starting to get into this kind of game, having some fun uh, with woodwork and a bit of aluminium track. Uh, they really do say to me, Dave, I'm so glad that you slow things down so that we can understand and have time to absorb it. I'm going to go along the center of the underside of the track. So I'm, and I'm going to pop a mark with a Sharpie, texture, marking pen, indelible marker. I don't know how many names there are. What kind of name? We can use the, uh, the chat in the premiere because you know you can, I think you'll be able to join in. Tell me what you know these pens as, whether it's a Sharpie or a texter. In Australia, I call them a texter. Just a brand name, it's like Band-Aid. You know, when, when, when we were created and, and blood came out of us when we cut ourselves open, God didn't say, I shall now create Band-Aids. No, it's a brand name. It's <laughs> all right, here we go. I have all of those marks right on the center. There's a center slot just here, and that is going to help me line up my center punch. 
Now don't be tempted to use a nail punch. This is a specific center punch for punching metal or timber, mostly for metal, to make a little divot in the metal for the drill bit to follow and then get guided into where it's going to cut the hole. If you don't make this mark with a center punch, the drill's going to wander. It's going to go all over the place and it's, it can be ugly. Hammer and on my bench, I'm going to go right over the center leg where I'm punching. I'm not going to punch in the middle. I'm not going to punch out to the side. I'm going to punch where I've got a direct contact with the support bench underneath. Now, they do tend to make a little bit of noise. And as I'm going through this, it doesn't have to be super accurate because they're, just as long as it's dead center of the track, it doesn't have to be super accurate this way because we're going to drill the holes for it anyway. So, yeah. I'm watching my keyboard. It's about to jump, jump off the back of the, the bench every time I hit. It says, eh. um, How about we go to Carl Camp? It's all happening. All happening. There we go. Carl Camp. So you can see right down on the top here. Oh, how did that come up on the screen? <laughs> uh, you can see where I'm just, I'm moving it along to where the leg is, which is that captured eight millimeter nut and making sure that I'm right on the center groove and hopefully the keyboard does not leave me before. Now you might notice if I was to put that there that there is a little bit you can see there's about an eighth of an inch in the middle there, three millimeters. Then if you can see or not, believe me, it's there. I'm going to go on the other side and to there. You might see it there. There is a little bit of a bow in this now that was created by punching. Let's go back to the main camera. And that's not a worry. So we've got a slight, it's almost 3D. <laughs> we got a slight belly. Don't worry about it. The screws are going to pull it down. Now, why have we punched the back and not the inside? Because now we're going to drill from the back and it's going to give us a nice clean entry. The back inside here is going to have a burr. As I say, you know, it's, why not? Why not? Okay, I'm going to switch the camera over there around to... Um, give me a sec, bring the camera around. I don't have enough cameras at this stage to be able to have them all set up. Like I don't have this type of camera set up everywhere. I'm going to look in the other, move the camera over, oh sorry, go to the second camera. And I think I need to come in a little bit closer. I'll move that chair out of the way. Yeah, one of the one of the things when uh, when I had the surgery, Vicky ca kind of took over my workshop, and I'm having a hell of a time getting her out. <laughs> she, she just doesn't want to go. She's got this whole new appreciation for my toys, and uh, and for this fantastic environment that I I'm so fortunate to have. Not lucky. Luck luck is doesn't come into it. We've worked hard to get here. All right, now I'll switch the camera over to here. Raise that up a little more about there. And you can, you'll be able to see what kind of drill I'm using as well. This is a Bosch. It's, a, um, it's one of their green models. So it's their DIY kind of thing. And it's quite a good drill. I find this one for big drill bits, wanders a bit. Dr. Greg has got exactly the same drill as this, and he said he hasn't got any problems like that. So maybe this was just, I find it, it will wobble a little bit on the shaft. Maybe there's something wrong with the clamping on this one, but it's not too bad overall. All right, so I'm lining it up with there. I'm gonna put the eye muffs on again as well. George sent me up some blue ones. 
On the front of this drill, there's a little um, automatic. Let, let's see if I can bring it around a bit better. That might work. Yep, wheel there for up and down. This guy here, up just a touch. Back. There, that's better. Okay, I rotate this counterclockwise and then I turn it on. You can see the speed comes up on here. Maybe you can see. Like so, bring it back just a touch. I can increase the speed if I want to. Um, there's a light and lasers. There's the laser down there now. And the light, there we go. How good is all of that? And I just use the crank. I let it bind the punch. I don't actually push down hard. I wait till it finds the, the punch hole. And you still got a really nice clean entry. I'll move it along to the next one. So it finds the countersink. Oh, sorry, the, the center punch. And the next one. Now this is a six millimeter drill that I'm using. I'm hoping I'm not talking too loud. The reason I'm using a six millimeter drill is I only ever use Euro screws to hold the tracks down. I'll show you exactly what type of Euro screw it is and I'll give you the code for it when I finish doing these. I'm turning, the speed is around 1800 RPM because that's what is suggested on the side of the, the drill press for aluminium or aluminum. Now this last hole, I'm not going to put my finger very close, I'm going to pull that away and turn this around. It's one of the reasons I've got this set up to make it dead centre, is so I can work from either side and I'm good. Turn her off. Now I did make comment as well that it's an idea to have possibly some calico underneath the drill press and down underneath because normally I sit here so that catches all, all of these things. These things don't like getting sucked up through a dust extractor very well. You know, I've said some people say well a two inch line is pretty good well, it, it may well be. All right, come back to the other. Here I am over here. <laughs> come over to this one. And you can see I'm back. No chat to distract me. <laughs> I will also be typing away. I'm going to watch the premiere when it's released. This is fun. I love it. All right, I'm going to move the, other, the camera back over to this side to the drill press. Raise this one up. And if I put it about there, I'll check on the other side here, second camera. Yeah, that's not a bad image. You hear the helicopters? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I think, no, I'll wait till I finish this part and then I'll show you the, the helicopters coming in. It was just amazing. All right, here we go. Um, switch the cameras, of course to transition. There you go. That's not a bad view. And I've got in here, I have an eight millimeter drill and it's going to create the countersink for me. Now the depth, I've already preset the depth. See how that's, that slots in there. That's, that's why these, these are so good. I'll do that. So let's clean that out three-quarter inch track works with so many things okay um, before I drill I'm going to show you up here on the side of my drill press this little guy here I release that and it will stop the drill going down any further no, the drill hasn't touched the bottom yet see that that's being stopped by this. I'll show you on the other side of the drill. There's also this thing here, which I used to use, but I don't like it as much 
as the other side. The other one is fantastic. It's, uh, it's very easy to use and pretty accurate. All right, I'm going to put the eye muffs on again because I have to be a good boy while I'm doing this stuff. Not that I don't wear them when you guys aren't watching, but you're not to know that, are you? <laughs> All right. Now this is going to create, see here I am, eye muffs. This is going to create, it's very important first of all, so that it's nice and clear, there's no obstructions. Of course, we're working from above. This is going to create the countersink and it's all go, also going to get rid of that burr. See the burrs that are sticking up? That's why we've drilled from this nice and clean on the bottom. I haven't got to sand off at all. I've got the drill set to kind of around three or 400 RPM, maybe a bit faster. And down we come. Again, I'm going to let it find it. Done. Again, the last one, spin it around so I haven't got my hand too close. Done. So these are all nicely countersunk now. They look really tidy. The other side's nice and flat. It's ready for the Euro screws. I'll switch over to the other camera. And there again, see, I was wearing them. <laughs> okay, so now I have nearly half past. Look at that. How cool is this? I've got the holes in. They're dead center. They are countersunk, all clean, all the way around. No burrs. I told you I was going to show you what type of screw I use. There it is. These are Hafley or Hafel. I don't know how you pronounce it. You tell me how you pronounce it. Well, you can't, can you? Because you're only doing typing. You're not doing this thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could record your voice and send it to me as a comment or as an email to davestantonvans at gmail.com.au. So, no, no, au. davestantonvans at gmail.com. I get, I get so used to au's at the end. And you tell me how you pronounce this. Hold on. No. This one, this, this company's name. Uh, but that's the Euro screw that I use. Now, why do I use that? My benches are anywhere between 18 and 19 millimeters thick. The track has thickness in the bottom. And when I put the screw in, look at that. When I put the screw in, that's just beautiful. Can you see? It's lovely. Um, you can see how much is coming through at the bottom. This is why I use an extremely coarse thread. I think you should be able to see that. It does not come, it doesn't penetrate the other side of a piece of three quarter inch ply. Let's call it three quarter inch ply because, you know, a lot of people watching are going to be in the States. Now I use a four millimeter bit for the pilot hole for these to go into. A lot of people say five millimeter. I prefer four because it just gives the screw extra bite when I put it in. Because I put a lot of pressure on this and I don't want the track to pull up. If you're wanting to put a track in something you're going to exert a lot of pressure on, as I say, this one has already got the slots and everything for glue. So what you can do is I use, um, I use liquid nails. I've gone through all the other ones. I've gone through the urethane glues. I've gone through epoxies, all of those. And honestly, I found the cheapest thing, which is liquid nails, is best. 
Now there's going to be all sorts of different companies make a similar kind of thing. It's like Band-Aids, as I was saying before, it's a brand. I just know that particular cartridge as Liquid Nails, I think Sellys make it, lots of companies will also make a similar construction adhesive. That's, I should have just said construction adhesive. Everyone will know what I'm talking about. So I put one bead, when I've got the dado, well, let's see if I can find something and make this a whole lot easier to explain. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna do it with this and see how we go. I'm gonna wing it. When I put the glue in the bottom of the dado, I go to the two corners of the dado. So not the side, not the bottom, not the other side, but in the corners of where the side meets the bottom, both sides, one thin strip there, the thin bead, and when you push the track down onto that, it disperses it up and across. If you put it all in the bottom, you run the risk of it coming up through the hole and stuffing up, and you'll have glue everywhere inside the track here, and it's ugly. You don't want to do it. Really, you don't want to do it. So maybe have a practice first, see how you go. I think that's it as far as creating it is concerned. Now I did talk about the Craig bench clamps and I use these things all the time. I took the mushroom screw bolt, whatever you want to call it, you know, coach head bolt, you know, mushroom head, dome head, we get caught up in what's the correct saying. You know, if you're an engineer designing a marine engine, well, yeah, of course, say the right word. But, you know, I, good enough, close enough. Now I take it out and I put a one inch by five sixteenth T-bolt instead. So this is a little T-bolt with a plastic handle on it. We'll take that captured nut out of off there. And that's the guy that I've got. That's what I use. And he goes into there, fits perfectly in the hole because it's the same thread. And that allows me to use it in the T-track, the, the quarter inch T-track, really, really well. Now, the thing is, why do I use this instead of the dome head? Two reasons. The dome head is deeper from there up to the top. I don't know if you're in front of my shirt, you might be able to see it better. The T nut, or sorry, the T-bolt has a truckload more surface area, so it's much kinder in sharing the load on, uh, this is, on this guy and to the track. Because these aren't really a clamp track, they're a, well, they're a T-track, that's, of course they are, you idiot, David. Anyway, there you go. Hopefully, 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 that has just made it dead easy for you guys to follow along if you were concerned and wanted to know how to do it. Now, the other thing people have asked me, can you put a Craig lever or a Bessie lever clamp in that T-track? Not advisable. The thing is, it's very narrow on the, on the lip and it could possibly tear the aluminium and also you would have to sand off. I've done it before. I used my Linisher. I'll get the Bessie. Now these things are fantastic. They also sell them in Australia on Amazon. I've got a link down the bottom, I think. It's exactly the same clamp as the Festal. Bessie makes Festal's version of this. They put a green handle on it for them. It's no secret. Now, on the back there, I've sanded that on the, well, I haven't on this one, but on other clamps, I've sanded that on the Linisher to be able to let that slide in there because there's no way it's going to slide in there at the moment because it's too thick. This part is too thick. Don't try and take it off this side. Take it off that side if you're going to do it at all. Make sure you're wearing safety gear. Don't get it caught in between the uh, workpiece tool, uh, the workpiece table, I should say and the belt because that could be ugly watch your fingers all that kind of stuff don't wear gloves because the gloves could catch and pull your hand in that's just me that's how i do it if you want to you can hold it on to hold on to it with vice grips and so your hands are further away make sure the vice grips are holding it super tight goggles eye muffs 
And also, because you're grinding metal, it's an idea to throw on some um, a dust mask as well. How are you doing? We're moving along well. The recording, I think, is still working. <laughs> I'm get, it's get, look, I just got lost for words there, didn't I? I'm going to be so happy if this NBN works for me. Now, I've jumped in. I've already pre-ordered. So as I say, it should be two or three weeks away. They're saying the 29th. Now, I'm going to allow another week for disasters after that to happen. And uh, I just noticed my hair was up like a cassowary. <laughs> uh, it should be, I should be able to stream full HD like you're seeing right at the moment. And it's been, you know I've been doing this for six years, this live show, and have not missed one. Even going to hospital, never missed it. So we're always moving forward. Um, help me out, help me out. Give me some thumbs up and make comments down the bottom below. Jump into the chat section, but important, subscribe to the channel as well. So it's down here. Click on the subscribe and don't forget to ring that little bell down there because that will notify you next time. They'll send you a little email and say, yeah, Dave's doing a video if you're interested. All right, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that has sorted that out. Now I'm going to show you, I did promise to show you this series of helicopters coming in behind this building that I'm actually in right now. Glasses again because you're getting old. Okay, where are we? Four choppers. Here we go. I may even talk over it a little bit. And this is heartfelt. Thank you so much to all of those people. The RFS are all volunteers. Did you know that? The Rural Fire Service are volunteers. The helicopter guys get paid off. What you can see there is the fire. This is during the day. The fire has come across the valley towards my place and just gone north of me a little bit. That, that smoke is around, let me see, the smoke would be 70 meters away from the side of my building. To give you an idea, that's from the fence on an oval, like a sports field. That's from the side of a sports field to the middle, to a cricket pitch. And that's not a long way away. That's the, I think, is that the first chopper that's come in? Now he's got a bucket on the bottom there and he's dropping a load of water. And I think the neighbour is going to object, he's going to spin. Yeah, so that's, if you're curious, that's my workshop. There's a garage in the front, office up the top, and the workshop runs all the way across the back. And here comes the next chopper. You see, I'm pretty close to the bush. Again, the, the dam that these guys are getting the water from is about two kilometers away. And honestly, if it wasn't for those helicopters, I would not be talking to you right now from this building. This building would have gone. Jeff's trying to clean the lens on his mobile phone. A little bit of water spray from the, from the fire pump. Now, I, I hadn't, didn't have to pay a cent. These, all these people were just looking out for people in dire straits, and that was me, and I wasn't even there. I was down in Canberra at the wood show. My neighbours came in. Here comes the next chopper. And the amazing thing about it is, Annette came home from work and they shut the road so no one was allowed in. And she said, Look, I'm with the RFS, Rural Fire Service. And so they said, Park your car, lock it up. And they put her in a police car and drove it down here. She hopped out, put all the gear on, and then immediately came down to my backyard with her husband, grabbed my hoses, and started wetting everything down. And Jeff was there. Look, this, that may not look like a lot. And at night time, it makes it look scary. But there's a net with a hose. That fire <laughs> right there is not even 10 meters away. And that's right behind one of the buildings. Up close, so you can see how close it was. The trees are starting to explode. This is the morning after. Now I'm going to get the next shot. 
well, that's, that's how bad it was. You know, it didn't get into the canopy, thank heavens. That's my workshop, top right corner. You can see the back of my workshop. That's how close it got. This is also just behind, I have a nice hedge. And that's the back of the hedge and that tank is a mutrator. On the left hand side is where the fire is, came through the hedge and you can see how close it got to everything. This is when I got back from the show and everything burnt out behind. And absolutely thankful to, to absolutely everyone. Thank you so much. We had my daughter, as soon as we found out the fires happened, we rang and said, look, can you get people out? I think they're actually ahead of us. So my daughter Bianca was down here, grabbed Barry, my mother-in-law, and there was someone else and their dog. And my uh, grandson came with his car, piled everyone up, gone up to my other daughter's house, Ebony, up at uh, Wendy Falls. And, you know, she's, she's more of a clean freak than I am. Will not let people walk into the house with shoes on. Well, Barry is incontinent. <laughs> She she let him in, so that's fine. So they were there for a couple of days, whilst all the drama was happening. Uh, the next morning, of course, Matt, my son-in-law, came down and uh, just to check what was happening, and he noticed there was there was a fence on the property that reignited, uh, of course the wind was still strong and jumped onto that quickly and got a hose out and made sure that that was right. There was some sawdust here that had caught fire as well, so terrific. It was so good that these people just jumped in and helped. But what can I say? All right, what's the next thing we're going to do? The next thing, the next thing, the next thing. That's enough of the fires. Uh, it's something I live with. All right, the next thing, the next thing. Keep your brass shiny, it's easy. Use a drill. Now, this is an idea that Derek Lark came up with. He's, he may not be the first person in the world to have thought of it, but I thought it was pretty clever. He's the person that mentioned it to me. So what he's done, he's got hold of a drill and this is for cleaning, let me see where it is, here it is down here. This is for cleaning the height adjustment dial that's brass. Now these things eventually will tarnish up, so you want to try and keep them clean, but you've got to polish them up first. So his way of doing it was using a golf tee. This is very clever. Put the golf tee in through the top and it's a left hand thread. So as the drill is going to be tightening. It's going to get a grip. It's not going to undo. I guess I could have put the drill in reverse, but you know, let's not take away from the fun of it all. That goes straight in, and then I tighten the drill up. And if you hold it up like that, it tends to make it turn truer than if you try and do it by turning it, tightening up the chuck when the drill's over on the side. So that's not bad. Now I've got the drill in second gear. If it was in top gear, this drill has got a four speed gearbox. If it was in top gear, it would be turning at 3,900 RPM, which is too fast. Now, how do we hold on to the thing? Well, let me move a couple of things here. How are we doing for time? Quarter to, quarter to the hour. This is great. Um, I, I'm going to use my drill press vise, drill press vise, and I'm going to slide one of those guys in, and I might even go to Carl Camp while I'm setting it up, because it might be easier for you to see. There we go. So I've got that there. These are basically a five sixteenth. Whoop. Don't do that again, David. Five sixteenth T bolt. And I've sanded a uh, just a, a standard plastic handle back to almost nothing. Slide it into the track, and then I can mount the drill in there. Tighten her up on the battery. Not a lot. Don't go crazy. I'll go back to the main camera so you can see where I'm at. So the drill is in there. It's not super steady. But for the polishing this, it's going to be fine. Now I may bring another camera in nice and close. I'm going to have a look off camera to see how that looks. It's not bad. Not bad. We'll go with that. There we go. Now the trick to keeping it turning 
is a zip tie. Now, let me see. I've, I think I've, that's, I've got a dead one there. I'll see if I can find a good one. Grab it out of the drawer there. Push that down. Okay, just a zip tie around pull it up and slowly pull tight that's not bad that's a good speed a little bit it's going to slow you down a little bit on me so I'll go one more click there we go I'm going to use a metal polish it doesn't have to be this brand and a timber skewer, bamboo skewer. This is the one that I was using on the lathe earlier. The pointy end of the bamboo skewer, skewer is going to go in to those little slots there. First of all, I'm going to apply a little bit of polish. Because the polish is what's going to work in the bottom of those slots. Can you see that all right? Maybe if I bring it around here. No, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose it. So I think possibly around the side there might be best. All right, skewer. I'm going to rest myself there on the back of the drill. Put the skewer in. And it's going to do the work in the bottom to start. I'm moving it across from one side of the slot or dado or trench, whatever you want to call it, to the other, just slowly. And a microfiber cloth or cotton cloth, whatever you want to use, I'm going to do the dirt coming off it. Go again. Now notice with my hand, I'm just putting the cloth on it. I'm not wrapping the cloth around it at all because that would be an accident waiting to happen. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm doing it so if the cloth gets a, gets a hold somehow on the drill, I'm not going to get dragged in. I'm going to use the skewer again. Little bits of black coming out on it in the center. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to use the cloth on the outside to make sure that there's no residue. because we're going to coat this in a second. I'm not going to go down on the inside. And to turn the drill off, a pair of side cutters. Cut the zip tie. Now that looks pretty fine. Let's take her out. What do you think? If you haven't got a lathe and you've got a drill, it'll do the job just fine. I'll go to the other camera, which is this one and there. Cool. Again, have another little look. It's come up beautifully. And one of the great things about this little tip that Derek's given us all, I'll move this over here is that I'll grab this as well because this is this is something I've done before this is a uh, the lever cap for my block plane and I've already painted this with a clear finish a clear gloss but what I was going to say is sitting on there you can have a look underneath you can see it's sitting up still it's not contacting it's the bottom of the, the golf tee is touching and holding it about two millimeters above. And how good is that? 
because now when we paint it, it's not going to worry it. Where are we? Move the mouse out of the way. Now this stuff is just a clear, a high gloss, clear. And I got this one because it dries fast. They say touch dry in 20 minutes, workable in 24 hours. For plastics, five days. I don't know why that is, but they say it. So for this brass, I left it go for seven days. And the other height adjustment, de blade depth adjustment wheels, I also left for seven days because the yoke goes over there and so there's wear on it, so I don't want it to wear out. All right, now the trick with this, don't spray too much and don't spray not enough. I, you just have to do it, you know. Practice makes perfect. When you reckon you've got it sprayed up, uh, shaken up enough, a mixed, you hear the ball rolling around inside, uh, just a light spray. So all I've done there is just one quick pass. I'm gonna do the same there, and a quick one on the inside. Now I guess if I was really good, I would have put a glove on this hand. And I, I recommend you do. I don't, don't you come around to my place and put a glove on my hand. What I'm saying, you put a glove on your hand, on the hand that's holding on to that little item. So that's come up really, really nice. And I can sit it on there. And as I say, it's sitting proud by a couple of millimeters. When you've got it drying, if you've poured too, if you've put too much on, make sure that it's sitting dead level because then it won't wash over to one side and pond and create a bump. So you want it to be able to spread nicely. So I, this has got a bit of a bump in it, this plywood. I'm just setting it up so that it's sitting quite nicely. There we go. You can't see it, unlucky. If I had it pointing down, you wouldn't see Zoe's sign. There. It's going to sit there and it's going to dry for about 20 minutes and then I'll put another coat on. But you guys won't be here for that uh, because we'll have got on with our lives. <laughs> to put it bluntly. I'm going to move this over there because I want to show you how my number four turner has come up. I wasn't going to show anyone until I'd done the, the, the video on the thing, but I thought, you know, it's come up so nicely. Oh, with the paint, you don't need, on this one, you don't need to tip it upside down and spray it to clear the jet. You just give it a, a wipe with a rag, and they say that's all you do. Yeah. All the other spray paints I've used, you have to tip it upside down. I'm going to show you a picture of this Turner number four when I first bought it. This is how it arrived in the mail. Now, I spent a lot of time cleaning it up because you can see the blade and the lever cap and the, the front knob and the tote, the body, everything is absolutely horrible. So I'm going to bring you back to this camera now. Now, this is the blade now after I clean the blade and also the backing iron. And they came up really well. There is a little bit of pitting up the top here. You may not be able to see that. Well, maybe you can. And the lever cap, I'm going to show you the picture again before I show you how the lever cap came up. There's the lever cap with all the rust and a few people were concerned that it just wasn't going to cut it, as in it wasn't going to look any good. Well, I'll show you, a pic show you the lever cap now. This is the lever cap after I cleaned it up. Now that's acceptable. It's got a little bit of pitting in it and I did repaint it, polished it all up, but what a difference. But I'll tell you what I did. I bought another number four because I got the bug and I found one really cheap, much cheaper than that one I bought. So I bought it and I've put a couple of things together. I'll show you. It's only the lever cap and the blade that are different from the original. Everything else, is original. So look at that, the, the knob on the front, the tote. If you remember the pictures when I bought it, this tote, there was a massive gap there of around about three millimeters. 
Um, I found out from Jim Davy at the show that cellulose acetate shrinks. So I had to elongate the hole that holds the front of the tote and I had to use a Dremel in the back so that the casting would actually fit back in. There's a lot of marking around. The, uh, the body I sprayed with satin, black satin, and the frog high gloss black. The lever cap is nicer than the other one. I'll still, I'm gonna keep it because you know, where does this bug finish? So I have almost got the full set and I'm over the moon about it. Ian Kerry has cost me a bit of money. <laughs> so the full set, I'll run through them. Number four is the smallest of the little bench planes. So we go four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six and seven. I have all those. The five I recently got, and this one is from Gary, who is a wood carver up in Queensland. This was his father-in-law's. So it was a shed clean out and he found it. And I had made mention I was looking for one. So he and I uh, worked out a price that we thought was fair and he sent it down to me. There's the tote. So a little bit of work for me to do on that one. As you can see, the, the difference from when I get hold of them and spin them up in the lathe or on a drill. I could do it on a drill as well. And I'm looking for a 220. So if anyone out there has a 220, I'm not going to sell it. It's a collection. I just want to make sure I've got the full set and I will mount them in a nice display box or uh, stand up the end there. And I will use them in different projects and I will hold on to them and I'll pass them down to either family or if none of my family are interested in it, I will hand them over to a museum. Because I think as Ian Kerry said on the show a few months back, we're custodians. We don't own these things. It's not me saying I own them. I'm looking after them and they'll be passed on to other people to look after them. Turners were started by a French guy, I think, in 1935 in Melbourne. Started off with two employees, maybe three employees. And in 1970, I think the company was overwhelmed or taken, um, purchased possibly by Stanley in 1970, November in 1970, I think it was. And uh, at that stage, there was 1,100 employees making planes, chainsaw blades and screwdrivers and you know, I think I've got my, yeah, there's a Turner. That's, that's my Turner screwdriver that I cleaned up. You know, I, is it lame? Am I lame doing this kind of stuff? People said, oh, look, it's going to get scratched the first time you pick it up. But I keep on saying to people, if I reach into the drawer and, or on the bench and pull something out like this, I personally believe it's going to up my game as far as the work that I do with it. If I pick up something as rough and cruddy, I'm going to have a very little, very small care factor in the job I'm working on. I don't know. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I want to hear your thoughts and um, on, not only on the planes, things that I've done in the show today, but uh, what you think about the better quality of, of video that you're watching at the moment. You can leave comments in the section below. Don't forget to check out the links as well, because that keeps me going. And thank you so much to my patrons while I'm talking about those kind of things. Um, supporting the channel through Patreon and Amazon. Thank you so much to everyone that does that. When someone buys something on Amazon and I get a little email saying, eh, you've sold something on Amazon, I, I get a massive smile. You know, so thank you for using those links. Uh, the people that are supporting me on Patreon, this is a particular level. I read their names out, but thank you for everyone that's just from a dollar up. Thank you so much. It really does inspire me to keep going. So these guys that on this you know, read out level, Chris Sullivan, Johannes Moer, John W., John Parra, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, Brian Shaw, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Michael Christophers, Brett Guthrie. Thank you so much. And th thank you to everyone dropping in and seeing me at the show at Canberra as well. I may do the Brisbane show as well next March. So that will be interesting. I've, I've yet to just check the calendar and see what else is happening. Massive. I sold all my stock down at the show and also came home with orders. So thank you very much to all of those people as well. 
jump on my website, stantonbench.com.au, and uh, have a look at what's, what's on offer. Okay, I think that's about it. I'm hoping everyone's had a good show, and as I say at the end of every show, look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Bye.